Hey guys, Matt Allen, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bassin. We are working our way through that buyer's guide series. Today we're talking rain gear. We got a ton of requests this fall for rain gear videos and we were kind of holding it off, holding it off because we knew that this video was coming. It's finally here. We're landing it before Black Friday on purpose so that you guys have a little bit more education before you start making those big purchases for the holidays. So we're gonna jump right into this rain gear. Um, I mean, do you wanna take it back? How did we, how did yeah, we end up here? Yeah, let's go back to uh, jeans, sweatshirt, and plastic bags to <laughs> try, and, <laughs> try and stay dry. Um, yeah, we timed this video too, so you guys could take, uh, take that discount, the Black Friday sale, into effect you know with with these suits because the nicer stuff is is fairly expensive but that's the price you're going to pay for quality. staying yeah quality staying dry and comfortable during uh crappy conditions so yeah <laughs> we started out uh you know jeans and sweatshirts and and pretty much froze and worked our way up you know i started with like a entry level set of frog togs yep. uh, which i still carry as, as a backup in my boat today um you know I think we both have bought like random plastic rain suits from oh, yeah. Walmart, you oh, know, yeah. just as backups. Um, but yeah, we've worked our way up. We've tried a bunch of suits from a different companies. And uh, I know for years you wore a Bass Pro suit. I wore a Cabela suit. I wore a guide wear. I wore a guide wear suit. And for a while I was happy with it, but I started in my suit. I mean, the reason why we're even sharing this with you is we want you to know we didn't just like pick a couple random suits and that's what we wear. We've worn we've, a lot of them. We've worn almost all of them. Right. Not all of them, but almost all of them. And I loved my guide wear for a long time and then I ended up blowing some seams out, but it took a long time. But when I tried to replace it, I got two suits in a row that I had problems with. And that's when I started looking because before that I wasn't even open. I had a suit I was happy with. I wasn't in the market, but when I couldn't replace it with a, with a like suit, uh, I was open and that's when I really started looking um, and the next suit that I went with was a gill suit and, and Tim's wearing gill I think you'll probably jump into that uh, and then maybe I'll backtrack from there okay cool yeah this is the new gill suit uh, we've had this now for about a year yeah I think you had a, a, a you grab that one real yeah. quick you guys will probably recognize this suit he's worn it for a couple years um, actually put our logo on it uh, these these suits are phenomenal uh, I wore it, I put it through the ringer in Idaho, cold conditions, 60 mile out, you know, 60 mile runs one way. Yeah. And uh, this is a great heavy duty rain set. And what I mean by heavy duty, uh, you know, some of these, some of these rain sets, these, these, these bibs and pan, the jackets combos, they're, they're different materials, right? So you have your heavier jackets, you got your really light stuff. And uh, this is what I decided to stick with for heavy duty cold weather you know that below you know right around freezing you know temperature right. where you don't have to worry about layering this is this is windproof it's just a, a really warm dry set yeah and what what this video is going to boil down to you guys is that these are the two suits that we recommend the most just from having worn a lot of gear uh, i love my gill suit i put two full really hard seasons into this suit uh, I fish more than the typical angler, so yeah, I probably put, I don't know, I mean, you don't wear it in the summer months, so realistically, I probably put 300 hard days on the water in that suit. I mean, it's been through it, and, and I will tell you, after all that time, it is still a waterproof suit. Uh, literally never had a leak. The only reason I even went looking and ended up in this suit is because we're in California, and it gets way cold here. It gets a lot colder than you think, I spend a lot of days on the water where at least a big chunk of the day is below freezing in the winter time. Uh, and that heavy, that more insulated suit, these are much thicker than this suit. That suit is a must. And that was how I was staying warm. But I also have those other days. Like I have this. Like this. <laughs> you where know, this it, morning when we woke up, it was uh, 30 degrees, right? Now it's probably six, low 60s. Yeah. Like, like I'm wool, I'm hot in this jacket. It, it swings so fast. And when you're on the boat, you're not going to bring two different suits. You know, we'll have rain run in and out. It'll blow through. And next thing you know, it's getting warm again. So I needed a suit that I could layer under. And I ended up in this AFCO. It's the anhydrous suit. And it is a thin suit. And this is the suit you guys saw us recently, like a couple weeks ago, running in Michigan. 
Um, and we ran it through the ringer in some <laughs> nasty, pretty, nasty pretty weather. extreme conditions and really cold weather. Uh, but what we did in that cold weather is we layered underneath yeah. it. I, you know, the tactical hoodie, obviously. Plug for our own hoodie. <laughs> Who wouldn't do that? Our own hoodie. Well, our but seriously. Um, and then the AFCO fleece we had underneath it. And uh, by layering it up, it was, it was perfect. Uh, but it's a very, very thin, very, very light. And for, for those changing conditions, it made all the difference in the world. I didn't get rid of my gill suit. I love my gill suit. I still wear it. When I look at the forecast, and I see that the bulk of the day is not gonna break 40, I'm in my gill suit instantly. If I see that the bulk of the day is gonna be in the 50s or 60s, but I'm raining, I'm in my anhydrous suit immediately. Uh, and it's it's one of those unique situations. Not everybody's gonna own two suits, right? right. Um, but because I'm on the water so much in such a variety of conditions, I wanted two suits. But for you, you are gonna sit back and you're gonna think, what weather, what climate am I primarily in? Where are you? Do you need the heavier suit? Do you need the lighter suit? Because the reason we're telling you these two is that after beating the tar out of them, really running them through the ringer, they are very waterproof. All your seams are sealed. All your zippers are sealed. They're thought through properly. They all have sealed cuffs. Both of them have sealed cuffs. You're sealed great at the neck. You have comfortable hoods. They're dialed. They're both really, really good suits for two different things. The only thing I would say about the anhydrous suit um, is because it is so light and it is so thin, if you want that hood, if you go to cinch that hood, it's gonna snug up. So you wanna wear a hat under it rather than a beanie so that when it snugs up, you've got a structure here to support it. The AFCO suit, or I'm sorry, the, the gill suit because it is heavier all the way around, it's got a little bit of support there and it kind of creates its own hat, if you will. Bill. And it was easier to wear a beanie underneath it. Uh, but again, that is the colder suit. So just know that typically when I'm wearing this suit, I'm wearing a hat underneath it rather than a beanie anyway. Both phenomenal suits, both for different applications. They're great. Yeah, they really are. You know, before this, I went out and purchased the uh, the BPS, the 100 mile an hour suit, and that was a great suit. It lasted me about a year or so, and it just started kind of kind of leaking. I don't know if that was my fault or what, but uh, one thing I will say about this AFCO suit, like Matt said, we put this thing through the ringer recently in Michigan with that, I mean, the, the torrential <laughs> downpours, the free, I mean, just everything, and it worked. Uh, it was, phenomenal. it was phenomenal but what we did like we like he said we layered and and me i i layer a little bit different than than matt i actually went out and bought uh that base layer by under armor the cold gear and that stuff is really uh tight fitting and it doesn't get in the way it's not baggy anything like that and that stuff keeps you warm so i wore that with a tactical hoodie and then my afco stuff and in low 40s low to mid 40s i was comfortable all day my hands i didn't have any gloves i couldn't feel them but the rest <laughs> of you know the core and the rest of rest of our you know, body was, was dry and, and warm. So we hope this helps guys. We know when you look at, you go on shopping and you look at this rain gear, there's so many different choices. You know, um, and there's, there's rain gear from like 40 bucks to like 500 bucks too. And you're like, right. What's the deal? Right. There's a difference in gear and it, it helps to have that real world experience to know what's worth buying and, and what's questionable. Right. You're paying for technology. You're paying for fabric. You're paying for waterproofing. There's a lot of uh, scientific stuff that goes into making these and designing these. A lot of angler input, I think, went into both of these suits. There's right. a lot of cool little features and stuff that uh, that uh, we we love. So again, guys, if you guys are in the market for rain gear or cold weather gear, um, check these two suits out. Uh, they're tried and tested. Matt, he's a guide. He's on the water five to six days a week, so he puts stuff through the test. I get to fish, uh, not as much, but but quite a bit, and. Uh, <laughs> And this is, this is what we rely on when we go out in cold weather and in storms. So uh, if you guys like this video, hit the like button. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to our channel. And as always, everything that we discussed in the video, down below in the video description, we will have links that send you right to the products. You don't have to go searching for them. Right. Just like these buyer's guides were designed, if this is something that you guys want and you need to send this video to your significant others, your loved ones or whatever for Christmas shopping, <laughs> go ahead and copy that link and text it to them or email it to them or whatever. But uh, that's why we're doing these buyer's guides, guys, just to make it easy for Christmas shopping for your loved ones. So I think that's it, guys. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, guys.